Thank you very much. Um, as a retina specialist, I'm thrilled to be, to be part of a potential paradigm shift in the way we deliver retinal therapeutics. I'm going to make some forward-looking statements during this presentation. Our versatile therapeutic platform is based on our SES microinjector, on which we uh, inject, can inject both gene therapies and small molecule suspensions. Last year, we had our first FDA approval of Zypir, and um, we currently have a two-pronged approach where we have an internal R&D strategy as well as external partnerships. In terms of our uh, internal pipeline, we have CLSAX, which is a small molecule suspension tyrosine kinase inhibitor. It uh, is currently in a phase 1-2 trial for wet AMD. And we've partnered with Regenix Bio, who, as, as you heard earlier, uh, has a, a gene therapy that they're administering supercoroidally, currently in phase 2 trial for both wet AMD and diabetic retinopathy. We've also partnered with Aura Biosciences, Who's, a present, who's injecting a virus-like drug conjugate um, into our supercoroidal uh, injector to treat choroidal melanoma. That's currently in a phase two trial as well. As I mentioned, Zypir was approved last year and it's being commercialized by Bausch in the US and Canada. And it's also been out licensed to, to Arctic, um, who is uh, currently doing uh, studies in diabetic macular edema and uv uveitic macular edema. Zypir, as I mentioned, is the first FDA-approved supercoroidal therapy, uh, and this establishes a foundation for our small molecule suspension pipeline. Next, I want to talk a little bit about some of the biomechanics of supercoroidal delivery via our SES microinjector. The core advantages of treating via the supercoroidal space include the ability to target affected choriretinal tissues for potential efficacy benefits, to be able to compartmentalize therapies away from the front of the eye for potential safety benefits and bioavailability. We're essentially bathing choriretinal tissues with drugs. And for small molecule suspensions, we have a durability. Um, Preclinical data supports the durability potential of these small molecule suspensions. This is a, our typical rabbit pharmacokinetic study, and you can see that these four different small molecule suspensions all last through the three-month duration of the study. So you'll see triencimolone, um, you'll see a complement inhibitor, a plasma calicor inhibitor, and excitinib. The SCS microinjector expands the supercortical space circumferentially and posteriorly to deliver drugs to the, to the macula. There's a natural pressure gradient that exists such that the interocular pressure is greater than the anterior supercoroidal space pressure, which in turn is greater than the posterior supercoroidal space pressure. So therefore, when we inject into the supercoroidal space at the pars plana, the injectate naturally flows to the area of lowest pressure, which is posteriorly. You'll see on, these, uh, on, these, on this slide uh, some images that show how the supercoroidal space opens. In the upper right, you can see the anterior supercoroidal space opening, denoted by the blue arrow. This is acutely after uh, injection in a clinical trial patient. And also, you, you'll see that the posterior supercortical space pressure also expands slightly, and that's shown in the lower right. Both of these images have been published, and they're available online. And could you run that video? This is an animation that shows how the uh, injection is performed at the pars plana and you'd see the uh, injection flow posteriorly and circumferentially. This video clip is an actual clinical trial patient being injected with CLSAX. You'll note the setup is very similar to a intervitreal injection with a sterile lid speculum and betadine pooling at the bottom of the eye. You would have noted that the uh, plunger was depressed slightly more slowly than an intervitreal injection because you're opening up this potential space. And you may have noted that there were no extraneous movements. The patient wasn't in any kind of distress or pain. Next, I want to talk a little bit about CLSAX, which is our proprietary suspension of the uh, tyrosine kinase inhibitor excitinib. We're essentially marrying a very highly potent pan-VEGF tyrosine kinase inhibitor with the potential benefits of targeted delivery via the SCS microinjector. Supercoroidal injection of CLSAX provides targeted delivery 
compared to intravitreal injection at the same dose. So on the left, this is our standard rabbit pharmacokinetic study. We injected the same dose of ixitinib supracoroidally and intravitreally, and you'll notice in the top box that we achieve 11 times the levels in the poster poll when we injected supracoroidally versus intravitreally. In addition, um, on the right, you'll see that we were able to maintain drug levels out to six months or 182 days at the level of the retina and at the level of the RPE and choroid. And these levels are several log orders higher than the IC50 for the VEGF receptor 2. OASIS is our CLSAX phase 1-2 clinical trial in wet AMD. It's a single dose escalating study. It's open label. There's four cohorts. Essentially, patients receive a flibercept at screening. A month later, they receive CLSAX supracoroidally. Then they're followed for one, two, and three months. There's a three-month extension study, so the patients are essentially followed for a total of six months. In terms of safety, there's been no dose-limiting toxicities. There's been stabilization of disease activity based on CST and visual acuity. And these actually uh, remain stable in the vast majority of patients uh, even after we excluded patients who uh, were rescued. Uh, in terms of durability, we started to see some preliminary signs of durability with 36% of patients not requiring an injection for three months or longer. We have multiple catalysts this year, including a data readout from cohorts three and four of OASIS in the fourth quarter. As I mentioned, Bausch & Lomb has launched Zypir in the United States. Emergenix Bio and Arctic will be reporting additional data from their phase two trials later this year. And we feel that's very important because it helps support the platform in the delivery of gene therapy supercordially as well as virus-like drug conjugates supercordially. So I thank you very much for your attention.